President Mohamed Buhari warned the Nigerian police force against harassing young people in the bid to arrest fraudulent criminals. But will this change anything? And it seems the minimum wage war is not over, as the Nigerian Governor's Forum has stated that the agreement between the federal government and organized labor is not binding on state governments. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. President Mohamed Buhari has cautioned men of the Nigerian police against harassing young people in their bid to arrest Yahoo criminals. President Buhari said that the Nigerian police force was one of the proudest national assets, but that there are also cases of extrajudicial killings and injuries, misuse of weapons and excessive use of force by some bad members of the force. He added that it is the duty of the senior leaders of police to ensure that impunity of any kind is discouraged. With me in the studio to take a look at this is Plus TV Africa correspondent, Mary Chinda. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you, Felicity. What has been your experience with police harassment and the sorts? Well, being a woman, I would say still bad. Being a journalist, still bad. Um, I've, been hard, I've had to report events where the police, in trying to keep the peace, would malhandle other people. You know, it, it's, it's almost like it's a war all the time. It's always like, okay, we're fighting, you know, you have to, you know, stop protesting, you have to stop, you know, uh, um, um, saying that, okay, you're, 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 you're canvassing for your rights and all of that. There's no civility in the way the police treats can you, can you cite it's a particular like, instance as a journalist in the course of, have you I seen it happen? I would quickly remind us about the Revolution Now protest that happened right here in Lagos. You know, I don't want to talk about El Elza Zaki and all of that, but the Revolution Now protest uh, sometime in August was, it was, it was a nightmare. You know, I remember how we were particularly tear gassed. You know, I remember I was still filming, I was still taking those shots, and we were being tear gassed. There was no care about the fact that, look, these are Nigerian citizens. These are human beings in the first place. It seemed like, I mean, the police commissioner even had to come, and he, 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 was, he, was, he was trying to say to his men, it's a good one, you guys are doing good. But those guys were treating people with, you know, no dignity, no respect at all, no regard. It's almost like, okay, we've given you just a one-way um, um, instruction, just go there, um, maim whoever you need to maim, and just ensure that the peace is being kept. That's, that's the attitude. It looks like there is some sort of hope because the president is acknowledging this, the complaints of, you know, um, civil society organizations. And he is saying and cautioning the uh, police uh, leaders who are currently on a retreat in Lagos that they Felicity, should try this couldn't, and deal this couldn't with be this coming, uh, situation. This, so what's this, your take on that? This couldn't be coming at a better time. This gets, this, this gets to tell us that our government is... Maybe a listening government, or they're beginning to listen right now, and they're beginning to, to admit the fact that these things are there. You know, maybe if our government was this responsive to admitting that we actually had a security crisis in this country, like the Boko Haram crisis, we would all be better for it. But beyond right the acknowledgement, what sort of actions do you hope to see? That the government well, I think will that take following I, I, these I comments. Think first, there's a lot of hope because this has been this this charge has been uh, given at a police um, conference. Do you understand? Now, there's a lot of hope, and the first thing that I'm expecting that we need to do is to begin to train our police uh, personnel. Felicity, even bail in this country is not free. You go to a police station and the police, the policemen don't even know how to treat you with respect. And then there's this, you know, label, police is your friend. Police is not our friend in this country. There is no regard, there's no civility in dealing with, okay, civilians. You know, so I'm hoping that away from all of the talk, away from all of the rhetorics that we're having, that there, there will begin to be conscious efforts to get to train these police officers on how to relate with, you know, people, with civilians, basically. That's what it is. Many, I, I remember that Revolution Now protest. It was like it was a war. 
it was like it was a war. I mean, that, that, that's not the first protest that I'm covering. And I'm seeing, you know, police come all out, you know, in some, uh, in some seeming battle with civilians. And that's not how it works anywhere in the world. Okay, it, it seems it's still part of talk, but talk towards an end. The retreat at the moment is ongoing. It's going to uh, end tomorrow, I think. And the vice president representing the uh, president has highlighted a whole uh, number of issues. Do you actually see this as one of those strategies, educating and equipping the leaders with new skills, will translate to the ordinary officer you see on the road? Well, it's still the same thing I'm saying, training. I am hoping that this is not just going to be some kind of talk, 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 and as soon as the president or the vice president is gone, we go back to the usual way. There's got to be a deliberate, conscious effort to ensure that people, this, this policemen are trained at the, at, the, at, the, at the state level, down to the divisional police um, um, officer that you have, down to your street and all of that. There's got to be a very conscious effort to begin to train and to, 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 to get to reorientate these people. Because the truth is, for as long as I've lived, this is how the police have been. What's your take on stun guns? At the moment, the, the, uh, at the retreats, the vice president talked about the fact that they've expended a lot of money to get these te uh, teasers and uh, stun guns into the country. But it doesn't seem to be reflected um, on the streets. You still see police officers with AK-47 rifles on the roads. Uh, shouldn't we see more? of these teasers for police officers that are dealing with civilians? Oh, well, first, I think that violence should not be the first option that a policeman should, you know, um, get into, you know, in dealing with a civilian. I do not think that is in any way a way to first deal with an issue. Yeah, because what that has led us to is the extrajudicial killings that we're having. People are being killed by policemen. People are trying to, you know, when people try to talk about it, it looks like it's been swept under the carpet. So I feel that the, what the vice president is saying is actually something that we should look into. All right, well, we'll just go on a very short break. And when we come back, this conversation continues right here. Don't go away.